Well, we're on the North Island of New Zealand again. We're here with Gerald Flirty from Wildside Hunting Safaris, and we got a little treat for us today, apparently. Yeah, we're uh, we're changing tack. We're going to give that red stag a bit of a break yeah. for a couple of days, um, and we're going to go for seeker. Awesome. Now, these are kind of a unique species that and there's very few places in the world you can hunt them other than North Island, New Zealand. Yeah, that's right. The um, the seeker, I think, were introduced from a uh, from an English park. Uh, we ended up with both the Manchurians and the Nippon strains of, of seeker. Um, and that, I think, was about in the 30s, 1930s or something like that. So, And not that far from here. So the... Uh, but they've just flourished in our New Zealand bush. We have a, we have a low brush called Manuka, and uh, they just love that stuff. It's just seeker heaven for them. Okay, let's go. Well, quite the morning so far. We've seen a pile of seeker deer in now. Yeah. It's a really nice box. You said there's probably a couple. If it was later in the day, we'd probably look a little harder. But, uh, they say, you know, you should shoot on the first day what you'd shoot on the last day, but, you know, we want to do some real good hunting yeah. and getting close on these animals. So, uh, But there was a couple of really nice stags in that bunch. Yeah, yeah. And they, I don't want it to end this quick. <laughs> no, that's right near the door. Eh? But the, uh, yeah, there's a good stag in that bunch going, the whole heading back into the bush. So um, we'll just see how it goes. But there's a lot of area that I want to cover, okay. even this morning. So. Yeah. And nobody's hunted this property for a while, so they're very, very relaxed. Yeah, this is uh, really cool. Um, weather's not the greatest today for running the camera, but Vanessa <laughs> seems to be coping okay with it. But they are the fantastic deer to hunt. Cool. So well, I guess we're just going to keep working through this Monica. Yeah. The edges here. Yeah, through the edges and, and try not to show ourselves on the clearings too yeah. much. So. Well, we'll do our best to keep the camera dry and hopefully we find a good one. Yeah. Pretty amazing, it, uh, that sound you can hear is actually the Sika hinds. It's kind of their alarm whistle. We had a fallow buck spot us over there and he's kind of got everybody spooked. Pretty cool though, it was raining really hard this morning and everything just kind of disappeared, but the rain's kind of quit and I'm actually seeing some patches of blue sky above, so I've been seeing a little bit of everything this morning, haven't we? Yeah, yeah that rain pushed them out of the bush a little bit. It did. That uh, was a really nice fallow deer. Yeah, it was an ice buck. Yeah. He had good, good eyesight. He was. Yeah, he did. He was the only one that caught us. Yeah, they're all gone now. Oh, this. It was just a flare of white, white oh, back ends and away there. You can still hear them? Yeah. Well, we were just walking through the, the trees here and we could smell something and it definitely smelled like something dead and. Uh, Looks like a beautiful red stag here. Actually. Yeah, it's a crying shame, isn't it? He's actually got vines all wrapped around his antler and looks like he got his leg through them. And Yeah, the leg's caught up there and you can see the vines tracing back through here where he's come through. And, and uh, Slow yeah. agonizing death probably for him. Yeah, they stress out and die. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, but that's a, a beautiful stag if I can even maybe even pull from that side. Yeah, he's a great stag too, look at that. The rack on that beast. Yeah. Oh well. Hate to see that. Yeah. Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Zeiss Sport Optics. We make it visible. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Coraline Sporting Goods, home of the Rocky Mountain Rifle.
Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Silver Willow Taxidermy, capturing the memories. Loa Boots, handcrafted in Europe. Deluxe Wall Tents, built in Canada for Canadian conditions. So we just got back out uh, after lunch. We decided to come out early. The weather had kind of cleared up, so we hoped the deer would be out and saw sea stags right away and we spotted what looks like a really, really good seeker buck. Um, at the end of this long clearing here, he's just in the trees eating, so we're gonna go try and get a better look at him. Pretty exciting though. Nice to see the sun too. So TJ, this is your, your normal, a fairly regular seeker scrape. It's, they tend to have it on a, a bit of a bank on the edge of the clearings. Um, they dig in there, uh, roll in it. It looks like a, a stag's been here, actually or a seeker deer of some sort has been here, checked it out. And um, they don't have the scent sticks, that the, uh, the rub sticks that the fellow do, you know, typical to the whitetail. It's kind of amazing how you know, the behavior is so similar between the deer, but so different too. It's, you know, they've all got their little different... Idiosyncrasies and differences, yeah. yeah. That's right. Very cool. He's nice and long, he looks big from here. Yeah. yeah. We just go and check and make sure that everything's in the right place. Yeah. They don't, they're not cookie cutter stags, but they're, um, every stag is unique, but he looks like a good stag. And another indicator too is that he's by himself. Yeah. Yeah, that's often an indicator that he's an old stag. They get quite hermit like. So I'll go down there. We looked at the pictures from the one this morning that we saw and he's, he's wider. Um, he doesn't have the weight or the fork depth, so I don't know. They're both beautiful stags. I don't think either one's a wrong choice, but we're going to try and get a little bit closer and see what this guy looks like. He's so heavy on top, though. Choices, choices.
Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Puma SGB Knives, knife maker to the world since 1769. Defense Aerosols, for when your life depends on it. The Wild Sheep Foundation, putting and keeping sheep on the mountain. that big steak from this morning again so um, it was just bedded on the edge of some timber and it was just pouring rain so we didn't get the camera out um, we've done a big circle around and we can't see him from here but uh, we're within 124 yards but it was just a bit of a rise in between us and him and there's no way to get to him without spooking him so um, tried this big circle around hopefully we can find him uh, he kind of turned his head and looked at us once and yeah he's pretty spectacular well, what's the chance of finding one dead stag when you're out hunting? And uh, we just found another one. And you can see the same thing. He got all tangled up in the vines. And you kind of look right in the middle of his antlers there. There's one tine just hooks almost right back over top of his head. And yeah, right on here. Yeah. Look at this. And just once those vines got in there, they just couldn't get off. What a tragedy. Yeah. Two beautiful stags we found here just today. It's pretty unique on that. Uh, one brow tine, how it's kind of got that, yeah. That little acorn there? Yeah. That's probably from, um, you know, bumping into something like the ground or something while he's feeding, and it just creates a bruise in the velvet, Yeah. and then the velvet continues to grow, and you end up with that little, little acorn. What a great stag, what a, what a tragedy. <laughs> So I've got two long range scopes here and they're both Zeiss Conquest HD5s. But the big difference is this one's got the Rapid Z ballistic reticle in it and this one's got the exposed turrets on it. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is which is the best system for hunting? And for me, hands down for under 800 yards, it is the Rapid Z. And I'll explain why. With the exposed turrets, what we've got is we actually turn our turrets to adjust for windage and for elevation. So every time we want to shoot a different range, we have to adjust the turrets. One click is a quarter MOA. So basically at 100 yards, it's a quarter of an inch. At 400 yards, each click would be an inch. At 800 yards, each click would be two inches. So it's a fairly simple system and it's a very accurate system as long as your scope tracks accurately, which these ones do. The big problem is when you're hunting, you're always adjusting your turrets. And so if an animal's at 400, you need to sit down, adjust your clicks. Now we can get customized turrets for these, so I can have them marked at 100, 200, 300, 400 yards, so on. The only problem with the customized turrets is when you change elevation or change temperature, your turrets may not be accurate anymore. So I prefer just to stick with the MOA turrets, but then I need to know how many clicks. So there's a lot of calculations can go on and when things are happening fast, you're not gonna be fast. With the ballistic reticle, all I need to do is make sure my magnification set properly and then I've got multiple hash marks in there 
And if the animal's at 400, I put the 400 yard crosshair on him. If he suddenly moves to 500, all they do is move the 500 yard crosshair up to him. So for simplicity, and where you don't need that precise, precise accuracy, maybe that long range target shooters need, absolutely the ballistic reticle. When you go into something a little more precise or you wanna start shooting further, then we are gonna to go to the turrets. This gun just happens to be a, um, a rifle we shoot gophers at 400 yards with, so we do need that super accuracy with it. But for day in, day out, big game hunting at long range, under 800 yards, absolutely, I'm going with the Rapid Z. Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Safari Club International Canada, first for hunters. Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine, Alberta's only hunting, fishing, and trapping magazine. He just stood up out there and uh... He's as good as we remember, so I think I'm gonna try a shot. He's kind of in the trees right now, so we're gonna let him move out a little bit. But he doesn't have a clue we're here. He's 175 yards right now, so should be an easy one. Should be. <laughs> in theory. Just watch him. That looks pretty convincing. I think I might have just uh, killed my first secret snake. <laughs> well done, man. Well done. Awesome. Just, uh, yep. I think I got him. <laughs> All you can see is antlers sticking out of the ground. Yeah, he's still moving a little bit, so we'll just watch him for a tick. These, uh, Manukas make a nice umbrella. Yeah, they do. If you look yeah. out there, it's pouring rain still. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, very good. Let's go see them. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm excited. Well, I don't know, Gerald, for as much as I know about Sika stags, that looks like a heck of a one. Yeah, that's a, that's a big bit of antler sticking up in the air there. It is. They're um, not quite the thousand pounds they look like from <laughs> 200 yards away, though, are they? No, they're not. But what a beautiful animal. What a beautiful mount that stag's going to make. Oh. What a wonderful gorgeous, stick. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Eyes are fully dilated. Yeah. Look at the color on those antlers though. Yeah, nice, nice cape, oh. nice mane. Yeah. Look at that color. Beautiful. Very beautiful. Isn't that stunning? Beautiful. You couldn't get them any evener than that. That's just so symmetrical. And that's the thing with these seekers, the symmetry of them. All the tips are still there. Yeah. Look at that. Little tip broken there, yeah. but they're so needle sharp. Feel that. Yeah. Now you're saying the way this, this is actually the, f the fourth point here. Yeah, that's the, what we call the inner, yeah. inner tops. Yeah. It comes off the back. It's so bizarre how that. Yeah, it doesn't, it, it's not like a red or anything like yeah. that. They're, 
yeah, flat to the front, and that's what makes them such a. Then they have this blade that goes up in here. Yeah. yeah. And these beautiful facial features. What a great shot too, right yeah. from way over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had a pretty good rest. Didn't they? It's better not miss those ones. But, yeah. Oh, it was a incredible day of stalking, though. Um, the weather's been kind of on and off today, but uh, you know we took advantage of it and. You know, you said we went in for lunch fairly early today because everything had kind of laid down. We weren't seeing anything. And yep. we were done lunch about 12.30 and you were said, let's get out there and see what we can find. And we started seeing stags right off the bat and um, it seemed like we saw all the big ones. Yeah. Well, the, the, traditionally, you know, the hunting's at either end of the day uh, when people come out here hunting. Yeah. So these mature ones tend to slip out during the middle of the day and catch a, a bite to eat. So, um, yeah. Well, thank Surely. you, sir. You're, um, no, You're welcome. a pleasure to hunt with, which is a lot of fun to hunt with. And I'll tell you what, you've got access to some incredible, incredible animals, and you definitely know a well, lot about them. Well, you know, you've been a, you guys are a pleasure to hunt with as well. And, and um, just seeing the, uh, the, the way that you hunt together and work together as a team is fantastic. It's really inspiring. Yeah, no, we it really have a lot of fun doing it. And if, uh, if you want the adventure of a lifetime, wild side hunting safaris are in the North Island your drill to call you will not be disappointed and and we're just starting that's right we've got a few more things to hunt yeah five or six more days left so yep well this will get him out of here and yeah yeah it was some photos and um get out of the rain yeah and you'll carry this time yep no problem. okay okay excellent <laughs> for more information on hunting in new zealand with wild side hunting safaris visit them online at wildside hunting Dot com. Check us out online at OutdoorQuestTV.com and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.